So welcome everybody on uh, the 10th of March 2021. I'm absolutely delighted to be introducing Martin Nolan, who's going to be talking about Neuralang, uh, which is a fantastic web tool, which is particularly good, I think, for promoting speaking practice, which is certainly something which um, I've certainly seen lots of questions about during the pandemic. How do we practice speaking in a remote um, context or in a hybrid context? And this is a wonderful solution for us to be able to, to do that. So we are recording the session right now. Uh, as per normal, I will post the, uh, the video up onto my YouTube channel, which is available at Joedale 100, and you'll be able to watch that um, as of tomorrow morning. Um, the session is going to run between 60 to 90 minutes or so. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Uh, please put the letter Q in front of your questions so it's very clear um, what people have written and for me to collect the questions as well. I need to say as well, this is a professional meeting, so I do expect everyone to be professional at all times in comments that they make in the chat, um, which I'm sure you will be anyway, but I just need to say that. And without further ado, I would love to hand over to Martin, who's going to tell us all about Neuralang. Over to you, Martin. Thank you, Joe. Uh, hi, everyone. You're all very welcome to uh, our webinar, Let's Get Talking with Neuralang. It's great to see such a good turnout. Um, as Joe said, my name is Martin Nolan. Uh, I work in marketing for Neuralang. So my uh, email address, if anyone would like to reach out to me after this webinar is martin.nolan at neuralang.com. Uh, our Twitter is also at Neuralang app, if you want to keep up to date with what's going on with Neuralang. And finally, if you need any further information, our website is neuralang.com forward slash educators. So just what I'll be uh, bringing us through tonight, uh, I'm gonna to start off and I'll give us a brief introduction into Neuralang and I'll give us just a, a sort of timeline as to how it came about and the idea behind it. Uh, then I'll show you some exercises and what these exercises would look like for your students when they're completing them. Uh, these include pronunciation, translation and listening exercises, as well as role plays and chatbots. Uh, from there, I will actually show you how you as teachers can create and share these exercises on new language with your students. And finally, at the end, we'll take some questions. I'll also take some questions throughout, as Joe said, every 20 minutes or so. So we'll keep them coming in the chat, it'd be great. So just a brief introduction to new Lang. So new Lang was created by Stephen Kelly. It began when Stephen was himself in high school in Dublin. So Stephen was in his final year of school studying for his exams and he was doing Spanish. Um, and while he enjoyed the, the subject, he found that he had no confidence in actually having a conversation in Spanish. He didn't feel like he could hold up a real world one-to-one -one conversation with someone. Um, you know, when he was in class, there was a class of 30 to 40 people. In, as, as you'd all know, it's impossible for a teacher to go around and be able to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation every day with the students. So outside of class, Stephen looked for people to practice with, but he had no luck. Uh, as soon as his uh, fellow classmates were out the, the classroom door, they were gone playing football and uh, they had no interest in practicing Spanish with him. Uh, Stephen would often get home and uh, he'd be at home by himself wondering if there was an app or some sort of platform that he could practice having a conversation with and getting some feedback on that conversation, it would bring on his confidence an awful lot to actually having that one-to-one -one conversation in real life. So this is where the, the initial seeds for the idea of New Align came from. Uh, fast forward a couple of years and Stephen is in college and he's going on a trip to Italy. So uh, a couple of months before his trip, he started using some language apps to practice his Italian. Um, he had done something like 100 days of Italian before going to Italy, and he was confident in his ability when he got over that he could speak. Uh, however, he uh, quickly realized that when it came to actually having a conversation, uh, he couldn't have it. He didn't have the, uh, the confidence to have that conversation. So he immediately reverted back to English whenever he was put in the position to have a conversation in Italian. Now, at one stage, he did work up enough confidence in a restaurant to ask for a menu. 
Uh, however, it didn't go too well. Uh, the waiter looked at him and started laughing and then walked away. Uh, Stephen had absolutely no idea what he said, uh, what he had done wrong. And uh, I don't believe the menu actually ever arrived at the table. So uh, that put Stephen off speaking Italian for uh, a long time. Uh, and it just reinforced the idea that he needed something out there to practice having conversations with. So another while later, uh, Stephen finishes college and gets a degree in computer science. Uh, he now goes out and he actually starts to develop New Alang. And what starts off as a means for him to be able to have a one-to-one -one conversation and practice speaking in a foreign language develops into this platform we have today that is actually used by students, but it's really as well a great tool for teachers to create lessons and courses that they share with students. And so New Alang is born. And as you can see, along with that, these characters here, these are characters we call Nulas. And uh, they play the characters in the role plays and they drive the conversations with your students. So your students will be speaking with these Nulas on New Alang. So I'm going to show you now, go through the exercises on the platform and how you can create and share these exercises. Now, uh, Joe, I just want to check, can you see my screen here now on the New Alang dashboard? Yep, I can. I can see the screen, no problem. We need to say to everyone as well that New Alang is completely free to use as well. Absolutely free to use. But yeah, it's all going really well. I've done another tweet as well, encouraging people to come along. This is fantastic. Brilliant. Okay, so this is the home screen on New Alang. So these are some of the exercises I mentioned, the role plays. Down here we have chatbots. So when I come on, I want to join a course. And in that course, then I will have the pronunciation, listening, translation, and the role plays and chatbots all within one course. So for me, I select search and then I'll hit courses. So you can pick the language that you want to speak. As you can see, we have a great selection here, Portuguese, Spanish, English, French, Italian, German. So the, the platform supports all these languages for you to create lessons in these languages. So for example, I'm gonna be doing English because uh, unfortunately my language skills are not great. And if I start bringing you through uh, some exercise in French or Spanish, I'll keep you here until uh, 12 o'clock at night. So for me, I'm going to go into uh, just a little course I created earlier on titled third year English. Now, so what I've done with this course, it's broken up by topics and then by sections. So the section is here. I've titled it week one. You could title it module one, anything you want. You could go then, you know, I week one here. I could have another section at week two. So within week, my week one section, I have different topics. So I've gone for holidays, talking about holidays and trips away, and then being at a restaurant, you know, learn how to order food at a restaurant. So I'm gonna select topic holidays. Okay, so now you can see different exercises that come under the topic. As I mentioned, it's translation, listening, pronunciation, role plays, and chatbots. Uh, so the translation, listening and pronunciation all take an input of phrases from you and then they're produced in these exercises. So I can just show you some of the phrases that I've uploaded. So I put through seven sample phrases. Uh, as you can see here, I'll be traveling abroad next year. So at the minute, I'm just using English because uh, as I said, I have no language skills. But for example, if you wanted to do uh, Spanish for English teaching, English speaking students, this phrase up here would be in Spanish and they'd be able to see the translation in their own natural language, which for me again is English underneath. So I'll just bring you through some of these exercises. We'll start with translation. This summer I am going to Spain with my family. Now you should be able to hear that. So the computer will, will uh, repeat the phrase and it's up for you to translate it. So as I said, in this, in this case, as I'm using only English, I will just be typing back English. But if you were to do a Spanish course, this would be in Spanish, and your student then would obviously have to use the Summer. English. Family, family. 
So this is just a brief. With, with my, my, mm. I am to Spain. So if you get one incorrect, it will just come up like that. We will be getting on a plane for our trip to France. But you can move on and you can repeat that phrase at the end of the convert at the end of the exercise. So So you can repeat that phrase again when it comes I'm to the going end. I'm skiing in Austria at Christmas. So there's also a word bank and it's supported on both uh, tablets and mobile devices as well as desktop. So it would come up here, the words in the, the student's natural language that they would have to repeat. So I am going skiing. And they have that one correct. I love swimming in the pool when I'm on holidays. So when they're finished this exercise, a report will be generated. And as a teacher, you will see the report and they will get to see their own individual report as well. So this is just a report that they did. So it can show then my answers, what I got incorrect and what I got correct the answer method that I used. So I used the word bank for one and I typed for two. And you can actually go in depth into what they did and have a look at their exact answers. So you can see here where I got some wrong and what I said and what the answer should have been and what I got correct. We, we just got a couple of questions, Martin. Is that okay if we just sort of jump straight in? Um, so first of all, we've had a couple of people asking whether it's possible to uh, record your own voice instead of using the um, text-to-speech. Is that a possibility at the moment? Mm -hmm. So for the pronunciation, for example, you will be speaking into, into it. And I, I'll go through the pronunciation right now and show you. We will be getting on a plane for our trip to France. So... When I hit this microphone, I will I will repeat the phrase and speak into it. And when I'm done, uh, the phrase will be recorded for me to listen back to. So if I get it incorrect, I could listen back and see what I said and try figure out what I was doing wrong. At the minute, uh, we don't have it saved so that the teacher has access to this. But from speaking to lots of teachers, we understand that this is something that they feel is important. So we are looking into that. But for now, only the student can actually record and hear what they're saying. So I'll just go through an example of that. We will be getting on a plane for our trip to France. Okay, so this is the one I got, I got correct. And again, as I said, this is the recording. So right now, only the student would have this recording for them to listen back to. But as I said, it is something we're looking to support so that teachers will get these recordings. We will be getting on a plane for our trip to France. I love swimming in the pool when I'm on holidays. I love swimming in the pool when I'm on holidays. I am going skiing in Austria at Christmas. Again, if I get one incorrect, it will just come up incorrect and go to the end. So I'll just show you this one. I am skiing in Austria. Okay. You also see I get a confidence rating on what I said. So at the minute, my confidence is 95%. Uh, this will expect to go down, you know, if, if you're not speaking your natural language. So I can hear again. I am skiing in Austria. So I can figure out maybe what I did wrong. Uh, if there's something I'm just not pronouncing correctly, I can listen back again and again. And if I'm just stuck, I can decide to skip and move on to the next one. I will be traveling abroad next year. I will be traveling abroad next year. Last year, I did not go on a foreign holiday. I stayed in Ireland. Last year, I did not go on a foreign holiday. I stayed in Ireland. Last year, I went to the beach with my friends and made a sandcastle. 
So when your student is finished, they can finish at any time or they can go through all the phrases. So I'm just gonna say, I'm leaving halfway through the exercise. I'm gonna finish exercise. They could save progress and take it up again. And again, you'll have the report. Again, it shows, well, I got one incorrect and I got how many correct, 10 correct. So this is an overall view. I did this just before I came in as well as practice. So this is the two times that I've done this exercise. So I can go into the individual exercise here now. So what I just did, I got four correct and I got one incorrect. And you can see exactly what they got incorrect and what they said. And finally, ones that I just did not answer, these are the final three. Um, would it be possible, Martin, to have a listen to um, a French pronunciation, for example? It's just we're being asked in the chat um, whether people can hear the French, the Spanish or the German. I appreciate you're not a linguist, but just from the mm -hmm. point of view of, in the pronunciation, just to play us maybe a couple of the expressions so we get an idea um, of, of what it sounds like. So just to be very clear, at the moment, it's not possible to uh, for the teacher to, to record their voice as a model, but that's something that you're considering doing in the future. Is that right? Yes, yeah, so from speaking to teachers, that's the feedback we've been getting. And uh, at the moment, to be clear, just the students can hear their own recording, but we are working to make that possible for teachers to be able to get that recording as well. Right, so, the, the, so the, when you say that, you mean the teachers will get access to the students' recording, or do you mean the teachers will be able to record their own model? Uh, both. We're both, right, both. okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll just go to uh, Spanish <laughs> and I'll, I'll it, it, While you're doing that, it's interesting as well that Carmen was saying that the system is quite hard on you. You're a native English speaker and still it's giving you 92 to 94% of confidence. What would it give to non-native speakers? This is something which I uh, found when I was trying to um, pronounce the, the French that came up. Um, uh, particularly if it was, a, no, it's Spanish, that's right. It's Spanish, which is, which is my weaker of my two languages, the foreign languages, but... Um, uh, I found for the longer sentences, it was quite a challenge, which was good in the sense that, you know, I really felt to get 100%, I had to really try ever so hard. But um, that is, I think it is quite, um, it is quite challenging, the pronunciation, which is why I think it'd be great to hear some French examples, if it's possible, mm -hmm. or some Spanish examples, just so people can have a little, or both, if people can have a listen to, to what it sounds like. But yes, it, it is true to say that in the pronunciation, which is something I think, uh, the fact you can do this independently is brilliant um using Neuralang, but i think um uh it, it is something which you have to really uh repeat a few times i think in order to get 100 percent. and i'm sure there'll be lots of students out there that will want to do that for sure mm -hmm. yeah so i've just gone to a, a spanish course here to give you a flavor of what the spanish would sound like so uh this spanish course is created by a spanish teacher called sandra and it's a, it's a fantastic course it's really really good and uh, for those who don't know, the Leaving Cert is the final secondary school exams in Ireland. And we have to do an oral exam where you speak for 15 to 20 minutes to an examiner in Spanish or in French, whatever your language is. So this is just prep for the Spanish Leaving Cert oral. And uh, I can bring you through here now. I, I won't attempt uh, any pronunciation. It won't be pretty, but I will show you what, what it sounds like. So uh, there's a, a bit more of a Spanish accent with these. Mi cumpleaños es el 20 de octubre. Me llevo muy bien con mis hermanos. So they're just some examples of the Spanish. Um, Nací en 2003. Now, I'm going to check and see if we um, could have... Can we some... hear a French one as well, Martin? Is that okay? I'll just check and see what French we may have. Thank you. Oh.
Ugel. Okay, so this is just uh, some French examples. Le nuage. L'ouragan. And if you want to repeat the phrase anytime, just hit this little microphone icon. L'ouragan. Il fait un temps de chien. Il fait un temps de chien. Okay. So there are just some of the uh, French samples that you can uh, you can see. That's great, thank you. Is it possible to slow down the voice at all, or is it just that it is the speed that it is? Uh, I believe it is the speed that it is, but uh, I'm sure because we're talking about students here and they're just learning the language, it is something we can look into to slow it down a bit. I think that'd be great to have that as an option that you can then uh, it, so the, the either the teacher chooses the speed or the students individually can choose their speed I'm sure well that's we, that's another question in the chat but anyway I'll let you I'll let you get on and you you can um add your own content can't you in relation to all the different um exercise types absolutely I'm going to show yep. all that uh, creation um and how you can basically create all this yourself and that's the great thing about Neuralang. It's been designed so that teachers can put in content that's relevant to their students and that they want their students to practice. So uh, I'll bring you through just a quick example of the listening, and then I'll show you our role plays and our chatbots. So these three here, really, they build up into having the conversation aspect of uh, Neuralang and going into the role plays and the chatbots. So I will be traveling abroad next year. Again, so this is just a listening exercise. I will be traveling abroad next year. Your students will have to just try repeat the phrase and what exactly they hear. I am going skiing in Austria at Christmas. Last year, I went to the beach with my friends and made a sand castle. Okay, and again, you will get the report of this exercise and your student will get their own individual report as well. So let me go to uh, the role plays exercise. So the role play is a, like a scripted conversation. And it's between two characters. So here's two of our new lists that I introduced you to earlier on. So it's Alice and John. So you can see the conversation laid out here. Now it's an option when answering, you can have uh, four different answer options. So for example, I'll show you if I'm playing John, you will get four different options for, for John's first phrase here, and your student may have to click on the correct one. Now this can be turned off, in, in which case your student will have to learn, learn the conversation and know their own part. So it's great for knowing your own part of a conversation and playing along. So they can go through this, learn off their part, and then select which character it is there and hit start. Hi, John. Have you any plans for the summer holidays? Okay, so this is the options I was showing you about. And when I'm bringing you through creating this, I'll show you that you can turn it on or off. But these are the four options. One of these is correct. So I can answer either by selecting uh, one of these four. As so. Hello, Alice. Yes, I am going to Portugal with my family. Wow, that sounds lovely. How will you be traveling? I can then just type the answer if I want. Will be getting the plane from Dublin to Lisbon. Where will you be staying during your trip? And finally, I can practice my speech and say the answer using the microphone here in the corner. We will be staying in a very nice hotel that is beside the beach. We will be staying in a very nice hotel that is beside the beach. So comprehension-based questions can also be thrown in in the middle of a role play to test your student's knowledge of what exactly is going on in the conversation. So just the, the example I left here is, where will John be staying? 
So only one of these four is correct. In a villa, hotel beside the beach, hostel beside the beach, or a hotel in the city centre. If they were to get it incorrect, we would just show up here, and they keep going until they get the right answer to move on. Okay, so what does John say next? And now it's now it's John's turn to start and Have asking you some questions. Plans for this summer, Alice? Yes, my family will stay in Ireland this summer. We will go on holiday to Kerry for a week. Now you can also get the the phrase repeated, and here is a translation option. So, for example, if this were for Spanish well, speakers, my, and they my, were learning off. We, Holiday, yes, yes, family, yes. My family will stay in Ireland this summer. We will go on holiday to Kerry for a week. So uh, this could be translated. So if I was a, a natural Spanish speaker and I'm learning English, for example, I would hit the translate function and it would turn that into Spanish for me. So as I'm using just an English example, uh, it's only in English at the minute. This can be turned off. So I know that a lot of teachers don't like having that option. So when you're creating this, and I'll show you this as well, it can be turned off. Okay. What will you be doing on your trip to Kerry? My uncle and aunt live in Kerry, so we will visit them. I will go to the beach every day with my cousins. That sounds like great fun. I have to go now. See you later. Goodbye, John. And again, once the, the exercise is finished, you'll be able to get a report. So for my latest attempt, you'll see the character that I played. So I've played John. You see what I got correct, incorrect, and my answer method. So I've used the voice for two. Uh, I typed in my answer once. And I use the option six times. So if you wanted your students to specifically practice their speech and you tell them use your voice only, you will actually be able to track if they did what they were told. Uh, I know if I was a student, I, I usually wouldn't do what I'm told. So uh, this is a great way to keep, keep them on their toes. So uh, then you can actually see their script and what, what, uh, what method of answering they use for each section. And you can go down through the script and see what they got incorrect what they got correct and what they said was incorrect. So then the final exercise you would have on a course is the chatbot. So the chatbot differs a little from the role play in that it allows for a bit more of a natural conversation. Whereas the role play, you need to have everything correct word for word. Uh, the chatbot gives the student a little bit more scope to attempt to say, to put the sentence together themselves without using examples or pick one of four. Um, so I'll just bring you through this is a quick introduction here to this. I heard about your trip to Dublin. How did you travel to Ireland? So again, you could have the translate function here if you want them to be able to translate into their natural language but that can be turned off. And also to repeat the phrase, uh, I can answer by typing or I can answer by recording the message and using my speech. So I got the plane from Rome. Okay. Interesting. I want to travel to Ireland next summer. How long did it take? It was a three hour flight. Where are you staying? And again, I can type some of the answers if I want. How did you get to your accommodation? What were your first impressions of Dublin? What did you do on your first night in Dublin? I went and saw all the tourist sites. I had
have to go now, but I am looking forward to hearing more about your trip. Goodbye. Enjoy Ireland. So this is the end of the conversation between you and Anula. You select finish exercise. And again, you'll have a report. So from speaking to teachers, uh, a lot have mentioned that this is a great way to uh, test your students and uh, be able to assess assess their uh, ability to have a conversation, be able to speak in the language. So let me see my report. So here's my weekly progress, the exercise I've completed. And here is the latest bot exercise for myself. Again, I've done the text four times and I've used speech three times. And you as a teacher will get a whole copy of the script. So every answer your student has and everything they're saying, you'd be able to see that. So even if your students, they're using this independently at home, you'll be able to monitor and see everything that they're doing. So it takes it down word for word. So anything that's incorrect, anything that you feel isn't quite right, you'll be able to see that. And that's why it's great for doing assessments. Your students try to do this at home and it may get a couple of things wrong. You'll be able to correct that from here, from the laptop, no problem. So uh, I might take some questions now, if there is any, Joe, before I go into uh, showing you how to create these exercises. That's great. There are some questions, uh, quite a few. So uh, just give me a moment. I'll just try and uh, go through them in the order um, that they've come up. Right. So uh, one of the questions at the beginning was, can you upload phrases from a spreadsheet or does it have to be done individually? Yes, you can upload uh, phrases from a spreadsheet. And I'll go through that in, in a couple of minutes when I'm showing you how to create the exercises. Yeah. OK, I think I'm right in saying it, that's possible for all of the activities apart from the role play. So yes, so is that right? That's correct. So for the apart from the role play and the chatbot, so for the pronunciation, listening, and translation, you can upload the phrases. Uh, we are looking into supporting that for the role play as well, uh, but it's just not there at the minute. Fantastic, excellent. I think for the I think the role play option when that is available, I think that would be particularly good for exam classes. That that's what I got particularly excited about when I saw. New Lang for the first time and going through the the, the chatbot dialogues. I think um, if it's possible to upload many many uh, phrases from an, an Excel spreadsheet, for example, I think that would be be amazing. Right. So another another question. Um, now we know that it's free at the moment, but a question is: Do you envisage an upgraded version that we'll have to pay for? E.g., I'm just thinking with Quizlet, you need to pay to have your own recording, or is that something you don't want to talk about right now? And it's on your roadmap. That's something you're thinking about. Um, so that's something maybe I, I, I cannot say with definite, I give you a definite answer on because uh, we're so early at the minute, we're uh, pre-commercialization. So at the minute, it's completely free and we're leaving it free for all teachers to play around with. Our main currency is uh, feedback because all feedback really helps us and helps us make New Alang the platform, a brilliant platform to use. So we are looking to commercialize it at some stage in the future, uh, what that commercial will look commercial model will look like is uncertain yet. But it may come as a premium version, or a a ad free version, maybe to pay for. Or we're also looking into models where by teachers create the content, and if they want to put the content public, which I'll be showing you when I'm in a few moments, um, and this content gets a lot of uses they may actually be able to earn and generate income from this content. So it's maybe a bit of an incentive to actually create content and make it public to share with your fellow teachers. But as I said, I can't give a definite answer just yet. We're just figuring that out. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. I, I appreciate your honesty on that point. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, right. A couple of other questions. Um, so we have the question. I noticed you can record an answer too, but only in Chrome. Will that be available for other browsers too, e.g. Safari or Microsoft um, Edge, et cetera? The, uh, that is something that uh, our development team is actually working on right now. Um, so I'm, I'm not actually 100% sure if it's fully supported yet on Edge or, Chrome or Edge or Safari, but we're currently working on that to make sure it is. Okay. That's great. Okay. But at the moment, it, it should uh, work absolutely fine in Chrome. That should be 
uh, and, it, and it works on mobile devices in the same way? Would it work on, a, on an iPad, for example? Yeah, so it's been designed to work on mobile devices as well, yeah. Brilliant, lovely. Uh, okay, um, I'm sure you're going to go through how to log in students and how to register everybody. That was another question we had about do students need separate logins, but I'm sure you're going to cover that. So yeah, we can do once, that. Once uh, um, some of the exercises, uh, I'll show you then how you can share that with your students and how they can get access to those. Okay. Now we've got another question just about what the the, um, the audio recordings and what they can act, or if the teachers can access the student recordings. So I'll just read out the question. Uh, I really like the chatbot option for speaking practice, but do I understand correctly by what Martin said earlier that teachers aren't able to listen to students' recordings? Is this designed just to be a, a, an independent practice for the students, or do, does the teacher get access to all the recordings that the students make? Yeah, so um, right now the teacher will have will not have access to the students' recordings. Um, it's designed to allow them practice independently. What you will see is what I've shown is their script and what they said. But and and this is a question I've been asked a number of times. Um, yeah, uh, we will be looking into making the, those recordings available because teachers have pointed it out numerous times to me that it's something that's important to them. But as of now, no, it's not so Okay, okay. Uh, another sort of similar question. What happens if the pupil says something wrong? I'm not exactly if when the person that's written this, when they say wrong, if they may mean a, a grammatical error or an inappropriate phrase, but, do, but then the next question is, does the, does the bot change the response or does the bot simply respond to it? Mm -hmm. So uh, the bot, can be designed in two different ways. So it can be designed where it would simply, if something was incorrect, it would simply say, I don't understand. Uh, and then your student would know, okay, I've said something wrong. Let me try again. The one I just did, I envisage it, envisage it being used in tests so that if your student does get something wrong, they're graded on it. So you want to see what they get right and wrong. That bot, would just push the conversation on. So if they got it incorrect in the one I just did, uh, it would still continue the conversation to allow you to see the script afterwards and be able to grade them on that. Okay, lovely. Uh, on that, on that again, on that point, um, uh, Claudia has asked the question: How is the bot side generated? I don't know. I, I don't know if you're allowed to tell us that, or is that is just it's just coding, presumably? Yeah, it, it is coding. So it's a uh, it's a little bit trickier than shall we say the role plays. Or, the, or uploading the phrases for the translation exercises. So uh, it's something maybe uh, myself, I'm even not great at myself, but uh, we're working on it to make it a lot easier for teachers to be able to create it. Uh, but yeah, it is mainly coding. Okay. And uh, a great question uh, in relation to the intended audience. Um, is this aimed at sort of more beginner levels or would you use this for say, uh, students that have been learning language for say four or five years or so say exam classes for example mm -hmm. so that, that's the great thing about new Alang. because the teachers can create whatever they want it can be for any level so it's what you make it so for example as I said the, the Spanish course I went through this is for final year students in Ireland so they would have been studying for five years and this is to prep them for that you can take it down into the most basic, basic level of someone who's never spoken the language before. So it is what, what you make it out to be. Okay, that's fantastic. And then I know you're going to cover this later, but um, about the registration, but Lucy's asked the question, would each teacher need an individual account or can you have a depart departmental wide account? I don't know if that's possible. Um, no, so at the moment, each teacher would need an individual account. Okay. Okay, that's lovely. I'm sure we'll get on to registration in a minute, but thank you so much for answering. I think those are all the questions so far. Feel free, everyone, to put more questions in the chat, but I would love Martin to carry on and show us more about New Alang. Thank you. Great. So I'll just go through then how you can create one of these courses, and then from there, how you can add your students and share it with them. And that will help answer some of the questions that you have. So when I hit uh, on the home screen, I hit create. I have the option to create just the individual role player or bot, but I'm going to create a course. So the course name, I might say, uh, I think I used an example as third year English before. So that's what I'd say. Um, so 
So I'm going to put in English. So if, for example, your student actually spoke Spanish or even vice versa, you wanted to put it as Spanish for speakers of. So then if, if this were to be English, the translate option would bring it back into their natural language. Now, for me, I'm just going to go again with English and English because I don't have the linguistic skills. I know everyone else does. So I'm just going to go through. Now, here's where you can make it private or public. So um, again, the public content will be visible for all other users to see, and they'd be able to join the course and use it. And they'd also be able to, if they were creating their own course, they could use yours as a template in creating their own course and take some ideas from you. So at the minute, I'm just going to leave a private, say I'm just going to uh, share this with my class. So I'll leave it private. And it, you decide your own enrollment key then when you're inviting your class, they'll need to know what the enrollment key is. So I'll just go uh, key one, two, three. And you can also have reviews. If you want to leave reviews on, maybe you're sharing a public, you'd like to get some reviews. Uh, if you're sharing it with just your students, um, maybe some of them will be mean and give you bad reviews on purpose so you can just disable that and then if you want to add a collaborator so if you want to have a colleague working on this course with you you can just type in their email and they'll be able to access that uh, martin i don't suppose we could do this in french or spanish could we i appreciate you don't have those languages it's just um that's what people are sort of asking for in the chat that be a possibility I, I can walk you through if we do it say in french i can help you out with um any things that you might find difficult if that's possible um sure i could do I, I could um if you'd like maybe do it for speakers of french so i'll input the content in english and okay either auto translate to okay put back to french if you'd like to see how that works okay okay and then you can just add a, a cover image For your course thank you i do i do appreciate you don't have french or spanish it's just obviously in the that's what people want to see in a way but i'm sure we can work it that we can work it out i'm sure unfortunately unfortunately i don't have my <laughs> i really wish i did <laughs> and basically that's that's just the the template for your course now set up Okay, so now you create the section for your course. So I'm just going to use an example. Uh, maybe we're in September and if you want to use the start of the year, we're going to go, this is September's content for New Align. And that's the course section. Okay, so these are just some, some help guides, but uh, I'll bring you through it here now. So select author from scratch. So this is the topic. So I'm going to make the topic on a uh, family. So we'll be speaking about family in this topic. And again, you can you can select the difficulty. So we can go up here to proficiency at C2 or A1 beginner. I'm just going to use A1 beginner as an example. And you can add a, an image for your topic. Again, you can choose if you want to make some of the content that you create in this uh, topic public for others to see, or you can just make it private. So I'll just select private. And now we've created our topic. So this is our first topic in September section for the new Align course. Okay, so now phrases, this is answering the, the spreadsheet question. So you can upload phrases. So I can select here, drop CSV file or click to upload. And I have here in uh, family phrases. Now, um, 
I did have my translations in English. So I understand I said I'd change this to French. So at the minute, the spreadsheet has English translations in case you're wondering, but I will show you what it would look like when I translate it to French and I add individual phrases. Okay, so then that's 15 sample phrases that I uploaded straight from my spreadsheet, from my CSV file. Uh, if you want to see now, I can edit that phrase. So right now this is the translation that's in there. So I can auto translate the French translation. And of course, uh, as this is true, Amazon, Amazon's uh, own network, um, maybe not every translation would be perfect. So if you would prefer to add your own translation with that, you can just type it here and press enter. And then with each phrase, you can add an image. So again, I'll just use family as, as a brief example. So if the spreadsheet were to have um, one, one column in French and the next column in English, these would all be auto-translated. As I use two English ones, that's why the English is showing up. But here's what it looked like if this was being translated back to French. So if your students were natural Sp French speakers and they're learning English, they'd be able to see I'm the eldest in my family in English. And if they were stuck, they could then use the translate option so while you can upload phrases in bulk here via CSV, you can also just add them individually if you'd like by selecting add phrase. Um, let me see. And again, you could add your own French translation here type it and press enter. Uh, I'm just going to be lazy and select the auto translate because uh, I've no uh, French, French ability. And this comes up. And again, you could just select your image. And add phrase. So once you're happy with the, the bank of phrases that you've uploaded, you can just go then through the exercises. And as I shown you earlier on, they're all ready to go. So translation, listening, and pronunciation are ready to go. You've added the phrases. So all three of them can now be used. So now from a, a role play, so under role plays here, I would just select add new. And again, you can have some templates. So I it's, it's easy to go type of role play, I always go from scratch, but if you wanted, you could go through and use some of these templates. As you can see, the summer holiday ones that I had earlier on is here. I made that public so I could use it. Some on Halloween, your favorite movie. So you can borrow anyone's templates that they've made public. Uh, for the purpose of this, I'm gonna show you what it's like to create it from scratch. So my family. And again, you can add an image. I'm just not gonna do that now. I'm gonna select, again, I'm just gonna use A1 beginner. And now I select our new list, our characters. And finally, we select our voice. So you can make the content public again. So I'm going to select private. And this is where allow students to translate messages into their native language. So you can enable or disable this. I'll enable it just to show you what it looks like. Um, so at the minute, I chose English for French speakers. So this will translate back to French when they hit the translate button on the role play. 
And again, allow students to pick the correct reply from a list of options. So those four options that came up when I showed you the role play earlier on, you can disable that so your student would have to learn their conversation um, before they go into it. I'm just going to enable that again. Okay, so once you're happy with everything, you just select finish. And now you're into the editor. So this is where you create the conversation. So select which character you want to start up the conversation. So I'm just going to go here with Matt and say, So once you've typed that out, all you have to do is press enter, and that's the first part of the conversation created. Again, then, if you want, you can reply. Okay, so you can apply as Lisa. So again, here is the translate option. So that's translated to French. J. Aujourd'hui. Ton. Salut. Bear. Lisa. Lisa. Vu. Hill. Hi, Lisa. I saw your dad in town today. What is his job? So again, this uses Amazon's own, uh, own translation function. So the auto translate, it may not be perfect every time, but again, this is just to get, give your student an idea what they want to say in the conversation. And also, you know, if you didn't want this at all, you can just disable it. So Lisa respond. And then you can add the comprehension based question. So And in here you type whatever the answer is. So you'd want to type three to four different options usually. So I'm going to go with a police officer. And then you just select enter and select plus. And this is the incorrect answer. So you don't tick this off. When you do come to the correct answer, which is teacher, you would select that. And then you could just add the question. And that's your question added. Okay, so that's really all that's to it. It's as simple as just type, type the conversation, each character, type what Matt says, what Lisa says, and then you can add comprehension, a comprehension based question in the middle of that to test your students knowledge. And once you're happy with the conversation, I'm just gonna leave it here for the example. That's it. You're finished. And you can go in and you can test it if you want. You can see here if you hit start. Hi, Lisa. I saw your dad in town today. What is his job? Then that's it. The role play has been created. So it's as short or as long as you want to make it. The topic, the content is all what you want to make. It can be as relevant to your students as you want. And it's as simple as that to make. Now I have four different exercises created for my course for my topic in my course. I could then go back to the course and I could add, add a new topic for September's, September's teaching. 
uh, whatever that would be, holiday time or something like that. And then I could create October's course, October's section. And that's really all it is to create in the role plays and the translation, pronunciation and listening exercises. So I'll show you how you can share this course then with your students. I might take, if there's any more um, questions, Joe, I might take them before I move on. Yeah, we do have a few more questions, mm -hmm. um, which is great. People are very excited about what they've seen so far, which is lovely. Um, right, so let's have a look. Um, right, is there a function there to duplicate a set of, say, Spanish translations done by someone else and can be used and edited for your class, like in Kahoot? I don't quite understand that. Uh, could you repeat uh, is, that again, Joe? What, yeah. What is, the fun is there a function that allows you to duplicate a set of, say, Spanish translations done by someone else? So presumably that means if you make your course public, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, so is the function there to duplicate a set of, say, Spanish translations done by someone else and that can be used and edited for your own class? So uh, you can take public exercises and take them for your own class, and then you can edit them to suit your own class. So for example, if I were to take um, one of the role plays, so these are the public ones that I showed earlier on. Because I've selected English, I'm just getting the English examples, but there's plenty of Spanish ones there as well that you could take. And then I just select it. And then I could rename it. If I'm happy with the name or I'm happy with the actors, I can take that. And go next, choose my settings, public or private, translations, yes or no, and if they have the answer options. Perfect. Yeah. So in other words, so you can you can you can copy someone's course to your own account and then edit it as you see fit. Absolutely. And then you're brought straight to the editor. So this is someone's someone's after creating a great Spanish role play, for example. This would come up like this, and you could just edit by selecting edit here. You may remove it if you want or you can even change the, the layout if you want to bring it down one or up one. So it can all be edited. Uh, Brilliant. Once yeah. Brilliant. Am I right in saying that you can edit the bots names as well? If you want to have say Spanish names or French names, is that possible? Yeah. So when, when you actually select um, the language, so because again, I used English, I'm getting some English names, but if you were to select Spanish, you get Spanish names. But if you could you edit them, uh, if you want to add other names, could you edit individual names, or is it just the ones that have been selected by Newland? You can, you can, you can, you can actually. The names are actually up to you. You put the names in in the settings. Okay. If you take someone else's, you will have the settings to uh, change your name. Brilliant, fantastic, lovely. Uh, okay, uh, right. So we had a look at the image bank. Uh, is it possible for teachers to upload their own images? Yes, it is. So right beside the image bank. My sister is the youngest in my family. If I were to edit, just say one of these phrases, you could upload an image here. So if you have a Perfect. Photo, an image, you can upload it. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. Um, when writing a role play, is there a word limit for each speaker? No, there isn't a word limit. <laughs> okay, great. Um, and... Can there be more than two bots uh, involved in a role play or does it have to be just in pairs? Uh, at the moment, it's in pairs. Okay. Is there plans for allowing... I suppose that would be a lot more complicated, would it, if you had like a few bots? Yeah, it, or is... it, it, it would certainly be a, a bit more complicated. Um, we haven't made any plans as of yet. That's, that's a new one for us to come across. <laughs> yeah. I might uh, talk to the development team and see if it can be done, but at the moment, there's no plans, no. Okay, lovely. Right, that's all the questions so far. Um, lots of, oh, sorry, there's another question that's just come up. I know it's a lot to ask, but are they, are you thinking maybe in the future of adding uh, Mandarin Chinese as a language? Or are you thinking of adding other languages, including Mandarin Chinese? Because you always get this question about how many languages are available in such and such a tool. Is that mm -hmm. something on the roadmap? Uh, it, it is something on the roadmap and that has been discussed. Um, but we haven't gone too far down the line with that yet. It's definitely something we'd love to support. Um, and we're looking into ways that we could, but we haven't got too far on that. Okay, lovely. Okay, let's, uh, let's carry on looking at all the other, all the other features. Okay, so yeah, you, you've created your exercises. Um, there's also notes here. 
So if you were to add some specific notes, um, say homework, homework tonight, um, do, do the translation, translation exercise. It could be used for that. It could be used to give specific um, instructions on the role play. You say, oh, I want you to complete the whole role play. Uh, or I want you to play Matthew in this role play or Lisa in this role play. So whatever you want to add into the notes for your students to see, you just add them there. And then you just select save changes. So once you're happy with your course and you've created some exercises, uh, you can then look into adding your students to the course. So Firstly, what you can do, you can share your course and you can share the link. So if it's something you want to make really public, you have the option of putting that up on your Twitter or Facebook saying, hey guys, check this out, might give you some good ideas for class. Uh, you could also share it straight through Google Classroom. Uh, I don't have a Google Classroom myself, but all you have to do is click and you'd have the link and share it straight into your class. Very simple. Or if you just want to copy the course link to a clipboard and send it via email or I don't know, maybe a WhatsApp group to a teacher's group that you have, some friends, you could do that as well. Um, then if you want to invite students to your course, you select invite. Again, if you had a CSV with all your students' emails on it, you could just upload that there in seconds and send it straight through. Uh, for me, You can just type it in and then select enter. And that's an email there. And then all you have to do is send invite. So then once, once your students get that email, they will click on it and they'll be brought to your course. If the course is private, they would need the course key that you created. So you'd want to send that to them as well, make it known that the course enrollment key is key one, two, three. But of course, this is only when it's private here. If you made it public, uh, they'd be able to just access it immediately. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, a lot of, of uh, sharing. It's quite simple. It's made very user-friendly and easy to do. So so just on that point, Martin, can we just clarify, do, this, do the students need to create an account or is it just a question of you uploading their names via a CSV file, for example, and giving them the code. They don't need an email address to log in, or do they? Or can you clarify how that works exactly? So the students would need, would need their account. So on the invite, you'd hit enter their email, and they would get a, an invite via email. Uh, they select the invite, and it would bring them to New Align. So if, they're already, if they already have an account, it would bring them straight to the, the uh, course. Uh, if they didn't have an account, they would just have to create one real quick, and then it would redirect them into the course. Okay, that's great. And then can, can you just sort of clarify just in relation to data, how you handle student data? I mean, it's, it's the only thing that you're taking from the students, an email address and a name, is that right? That's it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's really important to clarify. That's great. Lovely. Thank you. So one of the final feature then that I'm going to show is, so you've created your course, you've made this for third years, I've third year English, maybe third year French, third year Spanish. And maybe you're in a large school and you have three different classes in third year. You can then create individual classrooms. So to create a classroom, just select classrooms here on the dashboard, select create classroom. So the classroom name, so as I'm talking about third years, maybe it's class th uh, 3A. Um, so courses for uh, English 3A. So again, I'm putting in English here. And again, so I'm gonna make my classroom private. I'll use an enrollment key. Now there is a chat function if you want students to be able to chat on the class, uh, maybe they're you know 
uh, working from home and they're chatting to each other while doing their exercises. But we've given you the option to enable or disable this. You can just easily hit disable. And again, there's reviews, enable or disable it. And finally, if you want to add collaborators, if there's some colleagues that you all want to work on this together, similar to the course, and you want to all add different courses to this classroom, you can add your collaborators, your colleagues. Okay. And then once you're happy, you would just hit finish. So now you have your class set up for class 3A English. And then what you do is you would add the courses that you've created to this class. So here's my English for French speakers, uh, French speakers that I just created. And I'd add that course. And again, if you want to add the students to your class, it's the exact same. So firstly, if you wanted to make the class more public and you wanted to just share it, you could do so uh, via Facebook, Twitter, uh, copy it to your clipboard and you can share it through Google Class. And then more private invite, again, exact same way as the course, uh, do it via CSV or enter the emails manually through here and send invite. So that brings me to the end of what I wanted to show you tonight. So I'd like to firstly thank everyone for uh, joining me. I know it's a, a late Wednesday evening and you're all very busy working, working in class or in a virtual classroom. So thank you for being here. Uh, again, my email is martin.nolan at newalang.com. If anyone would like to reach out, please do. Uh, our Twitter is Newalang app and our website is newalang.com forward slash educators and again if there's any more questions I'd be happy to answer great job Martin we've got a few more questions if that's okay uh another three three questions although feel free to put in the chat any other questions you may have so one question um was can we print anything from Newalang e.g a report or individual student activity or that sort of thing is that possible um could you print a report uh you know i can check because i've never actually had to do it myself but if we will go to the course i'm, I'm sure it'd be if it is possible i'm sure teachers would love to see you know for the information like how long individual students have been uh, doing an activity what mistakes they've made and what have you or maybe that's something you could consider um, if you haven't got that as a possibility at the moment, yeah. because Definitely. obviously yeah. teachers need to provide evidence of the work that children have been doing, and therefore any help on that would be much appreciated. Absolutely. It's definitely something um, that we can look into if we haven't it supported. But what we can do. Hi, John. I'm just going have to go. you any plans for the summer holidays? I'm just going to use an example and check. I can show you that we can actually, you can actually download their reports into a spreadsheet. So even if you can't. Uh, print it directly from Newalang, uh, you'll be able to download Hello, it, print it from yes, your spreadsheet. I'm going to Portugal with my family. Could you show us how to do that, if that's okay? How will you be traveling? So while the option isn't there to just print it straight off, you can download it and that's it here. Just simple download and then it comes straight into your spreadsheet. Uh, is it possible for you to share your desktop so we can see what the Excel spreadsheet looks like? Is that possible? If you do new share in the, in the toolbar at the top and oh. then choose, uh, screen i think it is screen one mm -hmm. no, and then the spreadsheet now. there we are there we are so right so we can see uh who's taking part in the role play yeah so this yeah. i downloaded this for my overall so this is how many role okay. i've taken part in two role plays i was john twice my answer method what i got correct 
what I got incorrect. Uh, the times I've completed them, uh, what other exercise I've done. I've done two role plays. Right, so that would be for an individual student to, to get a report. That's not possible at the moment for a teacher to get an overview because it, obviously it's designed for individual practice. Is that right? Or is, or is it is it possible for the teacher to get any sort of report? So this this would be what the teacher would be able to get. Okay. At the moment, they'd be able to download that. So they would see the individual report and the answers on New Alang itself. But they wouldn't be able to see, uh, they wouldn't be able to print it off. Um, so again, that's something that we could actually look into um, and we'd cool. be happy to, happy to support so that you could actually print off their, their texts um, their answers and the script and what they used. Yeah, that, I think that would be incredibly useful. I'm sure people will agree in the chat, but f feel free in the chat to, to say whether that's a feature that you'd find useful, but I would imagine that, that people would. Um, can you clarify again? We've had another question of, around... Um, how to find other courses made uh, in Spanish, French, etc. Can you just show us again how to find other courses in different languages? Yeah, absolutely. So can you, I'm back on um, New Alang and you can see that, Joe, can you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So simply on the home, home, home page, search. So you have the option for role plays or bots. I'm going to select courses. And then you have the language you want to learn. So again, I'll use Spanish in this example. And then this is all this, the publicly made Spanish courses that you would have access to. Awesome. You just select continue learning or start course if you wanted to go play about and see what it's like. That's fantastic because you've got quite a few um, teachers in the States, haven't you, who are using the platform so that might be that some of the language in the or some of the um the way in which the course have been described could be uh, aimed at an american audience but of course we can use it in the uk we can use it um as well mm -hmm. yeah yeah and and if they're if they've made it public and as i answered earlier on you could go in and you could take what they have and maybe it's aimed at a more uh, american classroom but you could just take the overall exercise and edit it whatever way you wanted to suit your own class Lovely. Fantastic. And then the last question I think I'm right in saying that I've got is, uh, are you considering having um, New Alang ambassadors or people who can sort of promote New Alang or, or have, I don't know, um, extra privileges as, a, as a, a result of being an ambassador? Is that something that you could, I, I'm, I'm sure there are people in the chat right now who would be interested in doing this if you were, if you were wanted to consider that. We'd, we'd absolutely love that. Um, because we're always looking for feedback from teachers and, and, and you know, uh, teachers to create content. So, I mean, if we had an ambassador who was able to create some really good courses and make them public and share them with teachers, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. And you're, you, as you said at the start, you said you're considering um, uh, giving uh, teachers who create content, who share them publicly, uh, an opportunity of generating some income from that as well. So I'm sure um yeah it would be it would be amazing to i mean just based on people in the chat today uh there are definitely some people that have said they want to try this out so i'm sure you would love as you said you'd love their feedback and then yeah if there was a, a possibility of you know creating some content that can be shared that was um specific to uh, this particular context you know that most people are in um who are in this uh session right now i think that would be amazing Thank yeah. you so much, Martin. It's been wonderful. I think I'm right in saying that all the questions have been uh, have been uh, answered uh, in relation to everything that's been put in. I think that's right. Feel free in the chat to put any other questions. But I think as we are coming up to quarter past nine um, uh, on, on a midweek day, that maybe we should wrap it up right now. But um, it's been awesome. So I'm going to stop recording. And there we are. And...